Okay, now we're ready to do endocrine 18 in my series. We're going to talk about the placenta. We're going to talk a little bit about structure, what they look like, and then the hormones. And once we get to the hormones, be really listening well because it's complicated, but I'm just going to do the first layer of the onion, not all the complexity. Here's a nice diagram someone has produced. This is seen all over the world. It's neat. It's got the four types of placentas. It, the categories are more complicated than this. It depends on the layers between the blood supplies of the mother and the fetus. But here's four ways to classify placentas. Diffuse attachment. So it's called diffuse. Every little dot on the placenta, now these are placentas, there's no uterus showing. Every dot on this placenta attaches to a little area on the uterus, in the uterine wall, right? Horses do this, have this type, and so do pigs. Now we'll go, go to discoid. One large area attaches to the uterine wall, and then there's just a thin membrane. Of course, the fetus would be in here. These are not showing fetuses. Rodents and humans do this. I mean, isn't that interesting? Biology is fascinating. Rodents and humans have this type. Wow. Zonary, dogs, cats. The zone is completely around. We can't see behind here, but it's also just like the front here, and all these red areas attach to the uterine wall. Cotyledonary, ruminants, goats, sheep, cattle have this. Big areas, relatively big areas, like the end of your thumb, your thumbnail, or bigger, well, we won't get into that, on the placenta attached to the uterine wall. Now we're going to look at some more drawings that people have made, because remember, I'm a visual person. The more things I can see, the better off I understand it. Here's a diagram where they're talking about the zonary placenta. And of course, I said dog and cat. Here they've got it labeled the female dog is the bitch. The female cat is the queen. So that's maybe some terms you haven't heard before. There's the zone. That's the attachment. And in this drawing, they have a fetus. You should know one fetus per one placenta. Okay, let's do this thing. Um, and this is, I think, a dog, if I remember right. They're talking about the zone here, they called it the girdle. It shows one fetus, the umbilical cord. Actually, maybe you don't realize this, but the umbilical cord, if you followed it out of the fetus, it would be attached to all these areas uh, in that zone. Okay. And then finally, I guess we're, this is mostly dogs here we're looking at, but remember the cat does this too. This picture is the actual picture of a placenta, zonary, and how it attaches to the uterus. There's no uterus here, but there is a fetus here, if you can look at that. Okay, now let's look at some drawings of a horse placenta. Now this is a fine drawing, and it's got some neat things about it, so let me explain. If you remember the structure of the mare's uterus, there's really like two distinct horns. And the fetus usually develops mainly in one uterine horn. Hence, they call this the pregnant horn. Now, remember, the uterus isn't here. This is like an outline of what a placenta looks like. Okay, so here, the, the pregnant horn is bigger. And it had more things in it, plus the foal in this case. Here's the non-pregnant horn. That means the placenta does creep into the non-pregnant horn and make some attachments, but not nearly as large as the pregnant horn. Then you might call this the body of the placenta. Here's the umbilical cord. Remember the fetus would be here and it would be attached. You know, this is taken out of the animal and drawn, of course, but the foal would be here. The foal is attached to the umbilical cord. Nutrients are coming in, waste products going out. And then here's a new concept, maybe if you're not familiar with it, the cervical star. This is the part of the placenta that was like facing the cervix and up against the cervix. There aren't going to be any connections 
between the placenta at that point because the cervix isn't really made to exchange nutrients with the fetus. So you have this cervical star. I thought that was kind of interesting. Okay, now let's look at a picture of a real horse placenta. I'm not going to explain it all, but again, they said, hey, there's part of it in the non-pregnant horn. Okay, there's the umbilical cord. And of course, I wish they would have had something here to show its size, but we're talking about a number of feet here. I'm going to guess four, four and a half feet from this point to this point, although I wish they would have had a ruler out or something. Now, because everybody listening and watching these lessons, I'm assuming are human, unless the aliens come and also from outer space and listen to it. But I thought all of us would be interested in looking at a human placenta. Remember, it's discoid. So here it comes. Here's a human placenta. And this is the discoid part. The rest of the placenta is very thin membrane. And then you could say this is the fetal side of the placenta. This surface wasn't attached to the uterine wall because it's the other side that was attached to the uterine wall. This side gathered up many blood vessels and made an umbilical cord. And there's an umbilical cord. I think this picture was taken to show, hey, you can collect blood from the umbilical cord and store it. I guess there's stem cells there. I'm not all that familiar with it, but that's a human placenta discoid classification. Okay, now we're going to talk about placental hormones. Here, up here, placental hormones. I made this table in Word and I took a, like a screenshot. So there's some things from Word. You know, that reads dog. That little line is where my cursor was. So I'm going to talk about placental hormones. I'm only going to make it very simple, but I'm going to say this. When you talk about the placenta, then don't forget about the fetus. The fetus makes hormones. I'm not going to talk about that. And then when an animal is pregnant with a placenta and a fetus, then you've got to understand the ovary can be interacting too with these tissues. You know, the CL on the ovary is the thing, at least initially, that maintains pregnancy. So very complicated. I made a table and I'll explain it in a general sense and then in particular. Okay, so here I am. Steroids can be made by the placenta. Estrogen and progesterone are steroid hormones. Okay, let's go across for estrogen. A question mark and a question mark for the dog and the cat, that means... Hmm, maybe not. Maybe there's not enough information. So I'll just say unknown. Horse, yes. They know the placenta and the horse makes estrogen. We're going to go to progesterone. That name, progesterone, means progestational. That means it promotes pregnancy. A little iffy in the dog, perhaps. Remember, maybe they haven't done the right studies. Seems to be coming out of the placenta in the cat definitely in the horse, okay? But you got to remember, a lot of the progesterone is coming from the CL of the ovary. You can go back to the ovary endocrine um, lesson and check on that. Okay, now these are chorionic gonadotropins. Now, the chorionic gonadotropins definitely are their name because that's part of the placenta. So these are things coming out of the placenta. Well, lo and behold, dogs, cats probably haven't been discovered, okay? And I'm going to spell out chorionic gonadotropin here in a second. Definitely in the horse, okay? ECG, the little E means equine. Equine chorionic gonadotropin. And I'm going to bring over the chorionic gonadotropin, and I'll put it right in there, okay? Chorionic gonadotropins. Now, you should know by that name comes from the placenta, now in this case in the horse, and gonadotropins, if you remember, are things that stimulate the gonads. So in the horse, this hormone, it's a protein by the way, goes into the blood and stimulates the ovary to make more progesterone from the main CL, and it might even make more CLs, accessory CLs sometimes they're called. 
And what it's going to do is kind of ensure that pregnancy is maintained. Another name given to ECG is PMSG. And when I went to school, it was basically called PMSG. It wasn't really called ECG yet. So maybe I'll say, I have to admit, it's an older name. Okay. Now we're talking about for ECG. So it's also called PMSG. And here's the abbreviation, or here's the words for that. Pregnant mare, pregnant mare's serum gonadotropin, PMSG. So it can be isolated from the serum of pregnant mares. Now, just a little additional thing. Humans make this hormone, but it's not called ECG in humans. It's called HCG, little h, big C, big, big G. HCG is found in the urine of gravid women. Gravid women are women that are pregnant. And pharmaceutical companies can collect, the women can donate their urine, and they can extract HCG from the urine and use it as a gonadotropin. I've used it actually in cattle. Okay, now we're doing relaxin. Well, relaxin is a hormone. It's also made by the ovary, but it ends up being, there's pretty good evidence that in the dog, cat, and horse, it is made by the placenta. It can relax the cervix at the end of pregnancy, but it can also have other functions, which I'm not going to talk about here. I'm mainly interested in what they make. Okay, then we're down to another, the third in our series there of protein hormones, lactogen. It's a great name referring to, it's going to promote lactation. Not really found in these three animals. Not known yet, I guess. Maybe unknown. Probably not found. But in some animals, it's well known, like goats make placental lactogen. It goes all through the body, and there's receptors for it in the mammary gland, and it makes and promotes milk production by the mammary gland. So, pretty interesting stuff there. Now, here's a slide I found someplace on the internet, and um, it's oversimplified, but I just want to say, hey, yeah, look at equine chorionic gonadotropin. There's the HCG, helps maintain the corpus lutea. You can take both of these hormones and inject it into other animals. Maybe that's what I wanted to say by this. The rest of it you can pause and read. Okay, I just want to wrap up here. I just found this interesting picture of a bird trying to pull out a placenta from a cow. It just reminds me to tell you that sometimes placentas get retained. They're called retained placentas. Then finally, something more interesting, I thought, was that I think in Japan, this is made in Japan, if I remember the uh, citation right, where they have these human supplement pills made from placentas of thoroughbred placentas. Made in, I guess they're collecting the placentas in New Zealand, making this product. I'm not sure what the claims are, but it's a human supplement. Very interesting. And here are some of the illustrations that I used. Thanks a lot.